Good morning, everyone. The second to last devotion of 2021. We've been doing this for a while, haven't we? But it's still um, life giving and um, a good way to center our day and our week a little bit too. So we begin this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, O God, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Praise to the blessed and holy trinity, one God who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship and praise. Be still and know that I am God. Well, we're continuing with our daily grace on December 15th. Halfway through a month already again. Today's is, let's see, by Sam Guthrie. And our text is another one of the Christmas texts, Matthew 1, 18 through 20. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. In W.H. Auden's poem, For the Time Being, a Christmas Oratorio, the master poet takes a long, intense look at the Christmas season and the biblical account of the birth of Jesus. In the section titled, The Temptation of St. Joseph, Auden depicts the emotional roller coaster of Joseph as rumors of his pregnant fiance circulate throughout the town. Ashamed and at the end of his rope, he cries out to the angel Gabriel, Joseph's it's a little dialogue. All I ask is one important and elegant proof that what my love had done was really at your will and that your will is love. And Gabriel responds, no, you must believe. Be silent and sit still. In all of Joseph's confusion, the whispers of the crowd's gossip, gossip and his plea to God and the angel, and the common thread through Joseph's temptation was his doubt. He was tempted to doubt his wife to be his words and to plead for just some important and elegant proof that was that this was God's will. Joseph's doubt is the same that brought the scoff from Sarah when God promised her a child. It's the same doubt that caused Thomas to prod the wounds of the resurrection Jesus. But the angel Gabriel insists that what combats the choking weeds of doubt is what we are also reluctant to do. For Joseph and Mary, for Sarah, for Thomas, for the parent whose child is off the rails, the young adult whose faith is shriveled up, the addict who can't kick the urge, the success story who runs toward self-sufficiency in life's sinking sand. We are called to give up, be silent, sit still, and believe God always keeps his promises. He will forever and always be rooted in the finished work of Christ Jesus. Well, this is lovely. <laughs> this is lovely. I never thought about Joseph's doubt. I mean, other than just Joseph, this part of like him not dismissing her and the fleeing to Egypt. Um, I guess I don't really think about Joseph that much. Um, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus, they're in the nativity. I guess I think about them every year when I set them up. But he also got an angel to visit him. He actually did get, which is, Auden's poem is a little different here, but he actually did get a sermon from the angel saying, you know, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife or the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. He did actually get a word from God. He did get more than um, just believe your wife. 
this was too big for that, I guess. Um, well, empirical evidence of how, how this can happen. Your wife that is supposed to um, be tied to you and yet she's pregnant. Um, no rational person would believe their wife to be on this. So while Auden is saying, you know, the, that doubt of Jesus and that um, that the trusting is the most important thing, um, I would say I'd add this. That is something to say after that first sermon from from the angel for Joseph. Um, but Joseph first really did need to hear from that angel of God saying, "This child is conceived and heard from the Holy Spirit that this was God's will." to throw your life upside down to make your neighbors gossip and question and um, and drag through the mud and all. Can you just, you know, you know what people do now. Can you imagine then when he could have divorced her, he could have had her stoned probably. This young woman could have been killed because of this gift from God. And Joseph did the honorable thing. And granted, she went with Elizabeth for a few months. So I'm wondering if that was partly to keep her safe um, away from the crowds and their, their, their gossipy ways, their way of tearing apart rather than supporting, of shaming rather than... Um, at this point, it's, is it the lesson's been learned, I guess, if you want to have a lesson? Oh, so complicated. So, so complicated. But that aside, that he, the text itself actually says that Joseph did get a word from an angel on this one. We don't always get that, do we? We don't always have Gabriel coming before us when we are despairing, when we are wanting to, to um, know what God is up to. We don't always have Gabriel come, or maybe ever. I've never had a Gabriel come and talk to me, and I don't know if I want to, to be honest. That means it would be a pretty big shock. I mean, I've, we've had enough big ones, haven't we? But to have the need for God's messenger angel to come and tell us to not be afraid, that's like the next level. I'm not saying that some of us that don't get there, though. There's some things that just shake us to the core. This is a time when God comes fully into time. But in Thomas is the same way. Sarah is the same way. God doing the impossible. And I think we are incredulous at some point when God does the impossible, when there's peace in the midst of despair, when there's a healing. I've been asked a few times recently if God still does miracles. And the answer is yes, and I don't know at the same time. Um, life, birth is a miracle every single time it happens. Um, cure, healing from cancer is a miracle done through, through God and through our human means surviving this far into the pandemic that's a miracle too and moving forward oh. but the cure of doubt isn't proof all the time is it that's not they're not opposites in that way proof and doubt faith and doubt are are the ones that that are opposites faith in what you do not see but have in in hope and have in faith you trust a word of God, or you doubt the word of God. Um, both cases you might not see, or, or you might see the opposite, but do we trust God or do we not? And that is not something we can do without God acting in our lives. Thomas touched the, um, the side of Jesus, touched the sin that had been taking into Jesus' body because of us. Um, and Jesus said, blessed are the ones who do not see and still believe. And I know our human nature says, but it'd be really nice to just see. It'd be really nice to just touch. It'd be really nice to just hold. But God has decided that what we need is to hear and to have faith made in us by that Holy Spirit. So the beauty of this also, though, but Angel Gabriel insists that what combats the choking weeds of doubt is what we are also reluctant to do. And in fact, I'd say cannot do without the Holy Spirit already at work in us. For Joseph and Mary, for Sarah, for Thomas, for the parent whose child is off the rails, 
the young adult whose faith has shriveled up, the addict who wants, can't kick the urge, the success story who runs through self-sufficiency and life's sinking sand. We are called to give up. So this is a season of giving up. It's a beautiful message, isn't it? We've been saying, be still and know that I am God this whole last two years. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, be silent. Unless you're proclaiming Christ, that is, I say that. Give up on your projects. Give up on trying to get to the end before you're even in through the middle. Give up um, trying to change yourself and others. Um, and trust that God is working for God's will to be done. Believe that God always keeps God's promises because God has always kept God's promises. God is the one we can trust. He will forever and always keep his promises. And that, root, that, and that promise is rooted in the finished work of Jesus. Christ has already come and been born, our Emmanuel, God with us. Christ has already suffered, died, and was resurrected. God with us, God to save us, God to redeem us, God to hold us, God to bring us home one day. So yes, maybe you want an angel, maybe you want proof, but what we do have is a promise and the best kind of promise because it's from God who always keeps promises. And the consistency of scripture, here's Isaiah saying the same thing. Be still and know that I am God. God is the actor. God is the verb. We are the recipients. You have been born anew through the living and abiding word of God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. And part of that sustaining God is that gift of faith, the trust that, that is the way that our doubts are, flee from our conscience and are replaced with that peace that surpasses all understanding in you and sustains us in the realities of life. So thank you for sustaining this world, the macro and the microscope of this world for the, everything in between as well and for sustaining our lives. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness, we pray, Lord, continue to bring your healing where it is needed. Bring messengers, oopsies. Just a second. Apparently my computer wants to update. Bring messengers of your hope, Lord, into our midst, giving us healing, giving us hope, giving us your love and your, your promise once again, something that we can't hear enough of God. Let's see here. We pray for the gift of relationship with others, for this time of regathering, for the feeling like we belong and that we don't belong, God. Continue to support and love us in all these different ways. We pray for the communion of faith in your church tonight as we gather for Holden evening prayer and to prepare meals for the senior centers in our community. We give thanks for that community the doing something together, of being gathered for the sake of others. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world, heal the hurts of all your children, and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. We pray for President Biden and Vice President Harris. We pray for all of the important decisions that are placed before our nation's leaders, and also leaders throughout the world. Continues to sustain and um, open the eyes and the hearts of those who lead with God. For people in countries ravaged by strife or warfare, we pray, Lord, for those in great need today. We pray for 
families picking up their food from food banks, for families picking up Christmas presents from um, toy drives and community organizers, for that joy of gifts that is brought into so many homes. Provide for our needs, Lord, both large and small in this time. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction, we pray. And for those who work for peace and international harmony, Lord, this is a time of the peace is needed. Help us to see the humanity in one another. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land, Lord, in this Christmas season nearly to come, Lord, we ask that your word reaches people who haven't had that inertia to come back, either online or, or in person, who, who are worried about being judged, who are worried about um, COVID, who are worried about what they'll miss on a Sunday morning at home, who are worried or who are comfortable and need your nudge. So send your Holy Spirit into those places and people where nudges will help regather and bring them home to worship you in community. Oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and preserve us this day. Amen.